Let me give it up for Mr. Gabe Morales. Thank you guys so much for coming Woo! out tonight. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys ready to have some fun? Yeah. You guys sound like you've been having a lot of fun, so cool, 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 cool. I have, um, I'm kind of racially ambiguous, like nobody ever knows what ethnicity I am. So I get racially profiled or character profiled a lot. And I was doing a show the other night, uh, it was all black folks. And that's not the show to ask people like what ethnicity you are, because they're gonna tell you like all kinds of different things. <laughs> so of course I did. And uh, I asked, well, what ethnicity do you guys think I am? And this dude who was like in the front row was like, I don't know what you mix with, but you look like Gonzo. <laughs> And I was like, the Muppet? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, the Muppet. And I was like, oh, you think that's a diss? That's not a diss. I was like, Gonzo's my favorite Muppet. And then I was like, but I had forgotten what Gonzo really looked like. So I like went home like after the show and I Google image Gonzo to remember what like Gonzo looked like. Do any of you remember what Gonzo looked like? They're like, yeah, he's on stage right now. <laughs> Gonzo looked like a big dick and balls. And that's why I was in love with Gonzo. But back talk to the whole like show, right? because um, these people start fighting in the show over me because the guy, this photographer is like, no, he doesn't look like Gonzo. He don't look like Gonzo. He looked like the Taliban, the Taliban, the Taliban. And he said it like three times really loud, like the FBI was around the corner waiting for me. <laughs> And I'm like, wait a second, I said what ethnicity I look like. I didn't say what character from the Muppets or what terrorist group I look like I belong to. But it gets worse, actually. And after 14 years of living in New York, I think New York has finally started to rub off on me. I went to the airport the other day to go pick up my mom, and she walked right past me like she didn't even see me. So I'm like, mommy, mommy, aquí estoy. She's like, Ave Maria Purissima, Gabriel. Que lo que te pasó a ti? You look Jewish. <laughs> and I was like, for real, Ma? You out of everybody should know what I am. But if you don't hurry it up, I'm going to be late to the temple. <laughs> so I grew up in California and San Francisco, actually. And as kids, we were always afraid that the gays were going to get us. I'm pretty sure you think they got me. <laughs> <laughs> They did. <laughs> I just had a way to grow up. They didn't really want me when I was a little kid, which was great. But we had a little running joke when, as kids. Like, our running joke as kids, because we were afraid that they were going to get us, was if you ever dropped your keys, kick them to the next block. <laughs> if you ever had to tie your shoes, wait till you get home. Because the gays are going to get you. So I used to drop my keys, my wallet. I would leave my shoes untied, and I waited. And waited. And I'm still waiting. Till I moved to Harlem, and I was walking around there one night, and this fine six foot two thug comes up to me and stops me, and he says, yo, man. You know what a bisexual spot is around here? And I was like, um, is this a trick question? Or is it that obvious that I'm gay? And he's like, you want some of this? You want some of this? You want some of this? And I was like, you're gonna fight me because I don't know where the bisexual spot is? Like, what kind of gay bashing setup is this? He's like, no, man, I'm kind of fond of you. I want to get with you. How, and that these kinds of things always happen when you're going to like a job interview or an audition, but you have no time to like do anything with anybody. Like every time these things happen, you always have somewhere to go. So we get back to his place. And the guy turned into little Richard on me quicker than I could say a wop, babaloo, wop, balok, bamboo, tutti fruity. And I hate when this happens because I hate it when thugs come at me like they're like a thug and then you get home and they turn into a lady. This is when I realized that I might be a little homophobic too. It's not just you guys, it's me too. Because that kind of stuff messes with my head. Both of them. And 
needless to say, I got out of that situation and like, you know, got out of there real quick. But my mom thinks that being Puerto Rican made her psychic. But my original name was supposed to be Juan Gabriel. For those of you who don't know who Juan Gabriel is, he's like the Mexican version of Luther Vandross. Or he's kind of like a Mexican Liberace, basically. So my mom got it in her head that if she named me Juan Gabriel, that I would grow up to be gay. Well, I guess she was right. But I asked her one day, Mom, what made you think that like giving me this name Juan Gabriel would make me grow up to be gay? And she's like, I yo no sé, Gabriel, yo no sé, yo no sé, it was this feeling I had. It was this feeling, it was a feeling. And I'm like, a feeling? Like, what kind of feeling? Like, a feeling you got when you caught me sucking affectionately on my baby bottle kind of feeling? <laughs> like, what was I doing? She's like, I yo no sé, yo no sé, yo no sé, yo no sé. And I'm, I'm like, you didn't know, but you didn't know not to give me this name? Like, you didn't know, you didn't know, you didn't know? And like, I was like, all right, well, whatever. Like, you may not have been psychic, but you apparently found out the one name to give me with the sound gay in it, right? Because kids used to make fun of me all the time in school and call me gay and pause for a few seconds and then add the real part, like they were the first kids to learn about syllables. This used to hurt me a lot. And it was always kind of like bullying me. I'm not really gonna cry right now. I'm just, I'm just remembering, I'm remembering the situation. And they would always make fun of me, and I never used to know how to come back at them. And then finally, I built up the courage one day to say, what makes you think that I'm gay? I'm not gay. I'm Puerto Rican. And then they would get this scared look across their face like I was going to rob them, <laughs> or beat them, or pistol whip their little bitch ass. <laughs> so that's how you know gangster my gay was when I was eight lived away and went somewhere else. I don't know where it went to. I came out the closet and that gangsta disappeared. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with this. You guys hear this phrase, no homo? Yeah. I know some of y'all have heard this phrase, no homo. Please don't say solid. None of y'all ever heard this phrase, no homo? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 it's pause now. <laughs> Hello. Um, and I find it really interesting that the people who say no homo are usually walking around with their pants sagging and their ass showing for like homos like me to see. <laughs> you can tell them that I like hamstrings and I like calves too, so they can sag as low as they need to go. It's all good. <laughs> um, and, but I think that this pants sagging thing is like a conspiracy to get rid of the homo. Because I was walking, I was actually driving my car looking for a parking spot the other day, and I almost crashed like a dozen times from all this ass that was jiggling in my face. <laughs> and I can't even drive anymore because the other day I got stuck at a green light for like 15 minutes because there was all this ass jiggling in my face. They took my license away. It was honking and all kinds of stuff. But I get it, I get it. It's like looking at like Kim Kardashian or J-Lo or anyone else with a big ass. No hetero. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, I'm Gabe Morales. Have a good night.